Hey, Leo. Hey, hey. How's it going? Uh, so nice you're here, Leo. And uh, nice also Olivia is here. And uh, maybe I make a short introduction, uh, Olivia, about uh, my time with, uh, with Leo. Thank you. And, uh, and then um, I'd love you to take it over. And uh, so I think it was really in the early stage of, um, of, um, of when the really NFTs became and the art NFTs became really, uh, you know, into the limelight. Um, I think um, it was around mid-March that there was the very famous Twitter communication. People sold his artwork for $69 million. And then Elon Musk had a kind of a trophy and he tweeted to... Um, to people from how much you think this is worth as an NFT. And people came back and he wrote, uh, I think it's at least $69 million. And uh, that uh, communication on Twitter went global. And um, all the, the newspapers and channels and, and, and all, all the social media, I was talking about it. Elon Musk being super famous, people very famous in the meantime because of the auction result. And, um, and that was more or less the time I started to buy my first art pieces. And um, I, I remember that um, um, I, um, I, I, I was quite intrigued by that fact. And then um, Leo made, I think, one of his first art pieces. I don't know if it was your Genesis piece, because I think you did, uh, you, you did the little animals before. But I saw this Elon Musk piece with his trophy in his hand, and I thought that is so amazing. I love the quality of the work. It was animated. And I just thought when I bought it that this is quite historic because it's really, you know, on more or less, I think it was 20, maybe 27th of March that I bought it. So just one or 10 days after that, that, that Twitter communication. And I bought it, and I bought it for a lot of money. I think more than six e, so it was not a small amount of money. But you know, um, with my crazy uh, entrepreneurial, enthusiastic uh, intuition, I, I I bought it, and um, um, yeah, that's how I think Leo must have got a heart attack. <laughs> you know, someone buying his work, and um, and from then onwards we. We had an, um, an amazing contact. Um, Leo is not, um, is, Leo is a man of, of few words. And uh, I think that's why, I guess, in the beginning, he struggled to find the recognition. Unfortunately, it was still in, in, in timing that, you know, hyping and, you know, being in that small circle of, uh, you know, of, of, of um, yeah, let's say, the, the 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 heroes at that time. Um, uh, that was not easy for Leo to come in there. Um, and I think when once the board eight apes came in on the first of May, uh, Leo went quiet because with his three D uh, capability, a lot of the board ape owners came to him to do three D models of their apes. And I think Leo find its way, and. Um, you know, um, and was very busy with that, made a very good, I guess, a good income for him. And it was around one, two months ago that I said, hey, Leo, now it's about time you start again and I really want to follow you. And obviously also as a collector, you also want to be sure, to be honest, from my side, you want to be, you hope that you invested quite a lot of money into an artist and you want him to prosper on the new uh, NFT art space, especially, you know, I believe that he is so skillful. I really believe he's one of the best 3D artists around. So, um, so I was really super excited uh, once we did the drop from the Meta Art Club to invite Leo in, in the mix as well. Uh, I really believe Leo deserves a, a huge platform. I really believe in the future he will be one of the leading 3D NFT artists. And uh, 
if we can help him a little bit with the exposure and with this, uh, with this, um, yeah, with the drop that we are doing and the launch of the, the Meta Art Club, uh, I would be very proud. And obviously, I will be uh, also confirming myself to be really honest that my initial buy was not a wrong one. So uh, that I have to confess, there is some self-interest. So that as a little bit of an uh, introduction. Um, Olivia, you're a master in interviewing, and I, I've been now at 14, 15 interviews, and I know you will do a tremendous job, and uh, I'm going to sit back and, uh, and listen to, for sure, an amazing uh, 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 conversation between the both of you. So thanks, Leo, for being here, and thanks, uh, Olivia, like always, uh, of doing the interview. So thank you, Frank, for that incredible introduction, really, really personal, and uh... It's just so meaningful to see that connection that you've both established with one another as artist and collector. Um, Leo, you know, your, your origin story is really interesting as an artist. Can you give us an overview of how you evolved into a 3D artist and what that journey looked like for you? Yeah, um, you know, I, I kind of, always been inside a, a 3D artist without knowing it in a way um, because I just needed to like put the puzzle pieces together. Um, I've always been drawing since a kid and and play, uh, you know, play with clay, with a, a lot of Lego. I was really introverted as a kid. I mean, still I am right now probably, but uh, back then even more. And um, and I feel like 3D just just has those aspects of like the, the clay sculpting and the technical bits of um, what a building a Lego piece could be, or like you know the the, the 2D aspect of drawing as well. There's there's a, there's a there's a big mix of all the things that I like, and you know and. When I was in art school, I was playing a lot of video games and I, you know, also that thought kind of helped me to transition into, into something that is computer work, um, you know, and I just basically morphed that passion into something that could be a job. Um, even though nowadays even gamers can, you know, make a living out of it, but I wasn't aware of it back in the day. Uh, but I still, you know, I kind of stopped playing anyway. Now my playing is my job. And so whenever I have free time, I, I'll be modeling something, I'll be sculpting, I'll be drawing anyway. Mm -hmm. um, I still loved it, you know, I, I, can't, I, I came from a, a fine art background. So I did all the, all the oil painting, acrylic painting and, clay modeling and you know I did a bit of marble sculpting as well it's not you know a bit of everything but like 3D just gives you that flexibility that is not is not achievable in any in any other way um, and you know and, and I love to to try new mediums as well I did a lot of VR sculpting um, which in a way a lot of this, this is the work I do actually is made in VR and then I, from VR, I bring it to, to the computer, uh, to a normal software just to carry on working. But like the VR gives you even more freedom than a normal software would do. Um, so, you know, it's like, there's so much new things to, to, to discover and to play with. And, you know, it's, it will be stupid to just stick to one you know, to just clay or to just paper. So is I'm I'm super excited that this the 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 NFT world uh, brought up all this stuff and a lot of people is experimenting even more. Um, so yeah, I'm not sure if that answered the question, but <laughs> yeah, it did it did totally. And how did you um, make that leap, Leo, from? fine art to like VR sculpting because that that is a big leap um and the second part of that question is where did you study fine art uh 
far now was uh just back my hometown uh is where I am now actually um and and yeah i mean i i'm as a person i tend to get a bit bored of things that are all the repetitive and there's always some aspect of um well pretty much everything is if you stick to only one medium that kind of gets boring in a way for me and i just love to change things up a little bit and you know to like make him new every time and so you know as soon as i tried 3d the first time i was like oh wow it's this is something this is something you can do whatever you want here there's no gravity there's no limits you can go back in time if you do a mistake you know there's so much uh, you can do with it and also uh with 3d printing as well you don't lose the aspect of uh traditional art um and so yeah i the transition was quite easy in a way uh it just came naturally for me uh, i know it's not the same for a lot of people struggle to jump to um to make that transition but um i guess i yeah you know i as i said before i was always a bit of a nerd in a way so it was kind of easy for me to put what i had in the traditional art and mix it with the computer it was quite easy for me to be honest um but um but now it's getting in a point to a point where i kind of need you know that's why i went went to vr and then maybe i want to back up, uh, i did some more traditional work after that and then i want to mix it even more you know i just want to as long as it's, it keeps it is like keeps being interesting and is even fresh that uh, that one will drive my excitement i think yeah and and you've grown up if i'm not mistaken leo uh in florence is that right yeah i was born in florence and that's mm-hmm. where i sometimes go there but my family then uh move south from there within a small town called Grosseto which is a really small town um but we still I still go there sometimes just more more than anything for inspiration because it's such a uh you know it's such a beautiful city and just even walking and you know you get out the door and you already Im- immersed in in this beautiful place with the greatest art of, of the world and is all around you and you feel as part even by go taking a coffee or something yeah so i, I go there often um but i lived in in london for seven years so i you know i kind of have to <laughs> leave italy for job purposes okay. i mean now now that i'm more independent and i'm you know trying to be only an artist for myself rather than working for other companies i have the freedom to be anywhere pretty much yeah. so i had some time to spend here uh, in florence and uh but before i had to i was forced to stay in london because of the company i was working for okay um, But yeah, I mean, of course, NFTs gave me the opportunity to uh, to jump in, you know, to decide for myself in a way to, mm-hmm. to you know, to kind of change my path into something that it's only about me and my art rather than who, what they want me to do and where. Yeah. So that, that's a good, that's a big plus for uh, for all of us, I guess. Not not just for yeah. me. A lot of artists. Um I hearing what you're saying Leo you know that you were forced to stay in London um was London a bit of a rude awakening for you or did you find that it was also an inspirational place but for different reasons No yeah I mean of course is you know London is a you know great place and gave me so much okay. um I was for you know it's like like anything if you're forced to stay in a place you might end up not liking that place only because of they want you to stay there uh, in a way mm-hmm. but you know like um, 
there's nothing bad to say about London except weather. <laughs> but <laughs> um, which unfortunately for me as Italian is a big problem. But uh, other than that, it, I had so much there. And then, of course, there's a big scene, art scene, of course, even in London. And, mm -hmm. uh, and for, you know, all the contacts I have, all the, the professional work I did in the film industries and uh, in the, in, you know, all the studios I worked for, uh, you know, all, all really big companies, you know, like Disney, Netflix and uh, Lucas Arts, all those companies I work for that all happened in London and it couldn't be otherwise. So, you know, I'm still really grateful for the, all, the, all the experience and everything and the city and um, but yeah, so I don't want to, it didn't mean to came out like I was trapped in London because <laughs> I, I, I wanted to go there and it was my dream before. Right, yeah. right. So, no, yeah. I, yeah, I'm from London originally and I escaped. So for the weather partly as well. So I, I, I hear you. Um, yeah, but I th that's the main reason. Yeah. I, I think um, it's really interesting to hear you articulate, you know, your agency as an artist through NFTs and how you've been able to shape your career um, so that you have that independence to choose where you want to live, you know, how you want to create. Can you give us, um, anyone who's going to be watching or listening to this, um, a sense of... Um, you know, that part of your artistic journey, you know, changing from being obviously a commercial creative um, in the 3D space at a really high level and then shifting to, to NFT art and how that shift came about. Hmm. You mean shift in a artistic style or more like a lifestyle or... More, yeah, more like more like a lifestyle. Like, how did you make that happen? Was it just that you were kind of doing your professional career, and then you started kind of dabbling in NFTs, or or how did that how did that kind of become your major focus? Um, it's I mean, I'm still doing both to be honest, because uh, it's it's kind of hard to do the complete switch in a way. Okay. So sometimes I'm still doing some uh, some freelance. You know, it's hard to, to just jump on it completely um, because you kind of have to invest some time in it and take into account that you you might not sell or you you know might not sell as well as before. You, you know, this the some the some is not as stable as doing just freelance job. So it's a bit of a jump in the dark, of course, for everyone. And uh, I mean, when I started, of course, was uh, the, was a bit different in terms of NFTs, and uh, because like we had, of course, the, the the hype curve that makes a difference. So back in I was in March, there was a bit of a craziness going on for a lot of artists, and you know, and, and everyone was just trying to get stuff out rather than thinking about their uh, journey. And, you know, and as an artist and even myself, you know, like everyone got, was a bit confused back in the day. It was, was, it wasn't a good, you know, time in a way. It was really confusing and there was a lot of project like starting like crazy and then dying. Uh, so it was a really confusionary uh, period. Uh, so now I feel like it's a, it's more, it's way more chill, and there's more time, and people are trying to figure out. I, I started thinking about their their own journey rather than trying to getting the, the stuff out because of the fear of missing out and you know, the craziness going on. So yeah, what was the question again? Sorry, <laughs> I get lost sometimes. Um, I I was asking you, you know, how did you make that leap? from your commercial career, which is obviously, you know, you're, you've been highly successful in the 3D space, but that was your professional career. So how did you make that leap into, into NFTs and, and the balance between the two? So you have outlined that. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, as I said, like I still haven't switched completely because I'm not sure I, I will 
completely ever because I love both. So my plan would be to keep doing, if possible, both. Um, and I and I know it's gonna be hard, but you know it's like I really love what I'm doing, anyways. I you know I love animation, and I when they if they ask me for a good project and and over a movie or a TV series that is exciting for me, I you know that's still even though it's not my movie, I, I still I'm still really excited to be part of a movie and that kind of team effort that there is behind a movie or behind anything that is such a big you know um of, of, of such a huge size of projects and so you know it's like i'm not sure i will want to switch completely but you know like the, the nft allows me to completely be free and express myself and and slowly i'm kind of going maybe in one direction that is what i really want to do and and how i really want to express myself the problem uh, for me and more for a lot of artists is that you kind of we are still a little bit contained into the industry we were working for in a way for the style because you kind of you have to free yourself of that style but that style has been your job for so long and now you don't ever you're not sure anymore if that's your stuff or that's the stuff they wanted you to do. So for me, I just had that struggle. Um, because it's still what I like to do. But it's like, is it really what I like what I like to do and what I want to do is just what I'm being trained and what I've been told that I'm good at. So hopefully that's what I, you know, slowly uh discovering with the nft world it's just like freeing myself from those barriers um but is that still happening uh it's not and it probably is not as quick as we wish it could be but you know i'm sure a lot of artists had the same uh you know had the same uh questions that i have uh, but but you know it's it's really nice to have the option and to free yourself from uh, from barriers and from clients and from you know <laughs> being free finally. So it's it's, it's a really <laughs> good relief to to feel you know. So yeah, I mean I, I can I can um, understand what you're saying about kind of the pressures of the client relationship, um, and certainly you know I I think. I'd love to know more about, you know, what informs your creativity as an NFT artist, Leo, you know, because your work is so, um, so animated and, it, and it's so vivid and there's a, there's a humor to some of, of your pieces. But it, as you said, like, it's not all one formulaic. This all looks very similar. You know, you're obviously like dipping in and, and creating um, in a really prolific way. So, so how, how, how is that? kind of how do you inform your creativity and what inspires you you know it's like could be anything uh, sometimes it's just like you know like even scrolling um like randomly on instagram or you know like a picture of a of, of anything could inspire me usually animals really inspire me a lot um you know when i'm doing like a lot of the even the collection with the weird creatures i did and uh, you know there's so much that I love about that and they, they just make me smile and that's why I, I love doing them um, and you know there's or sometimes and most of the time it's just museums when I go to like when I'm back in Florence and I just walk around the city I feel so inspired and I just want to do something like that but at the same time putting something funny inside and like something that is more pop culture and you know with more of our time but still preserving some of that you know the the, the beauty of what of, of my roots basically you know and then and the art that I grew up with and so there's a bit of a conflict but um between the two styles but I feel like I'm, I'm trying to match uh I'm trying to match the two at the, at the time uh, right now and uh, 
and, and see how that works out. Uh, but uh, I, f- I just feel like I should ask, think less and act more in a way because I'm always too overthinking. Sometimes it's just the, the, like like the piece uh, Frank was talking about. That uh, that was like one of the you know the, the it just came out like and I and I had to work it like I push it through like in a really short time like without sleeping or eating because I just was like in my head I was like oh I want to do it I want to post it right now you know that and that's usually and that's still my biggest uh you know in terms of nfts it's still my biggest sell, sell so it's it has to do something you know it's like in and most of the time the more I think about stuff and the more I change what my I, initial idea was so I'm you know I'm I'm really I'm a strong believer of the like first try method. I just say like you know like in movies, and I don't know how you say, but like when the first shot is a good one, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, um, I I don't know what the English always say "buona la prima" in Italian, which is like the first try is the best one. I'm gonna start doing that and just like you know mixing what I have in my head, do a quick sketch and. Uh, on paper maybe and then and then just go with the flow and that's usually yeah the best result that you that that come out usually is that way hopefully (laughs) do you work in a flow state so do you kind of go through that process and then say okay I'm done I you know it's the work is done or do you kind of go back to the work and wait a while and go back and see if you review or are you really kind of quite quite um focused in your output like you've said like the first time this is the best this is it I you know like how how do you how do you kind of finish a work yeah you know that's that's where the struggle um for a lot of a lot of artists is usually mm-hmm. like to say is that's enough because yeah. you know, like it's like that famous uh, Leonardo da Vinci quote, where art is never is never finished; it's only abandoned. And it's like, you know, there's nothing more true than that. Like, especially for me, I never, I'm never truly satisfied about what I what I'm doing, and I like it could always be better. But that's a problem. Is you know, always be a problem for me. Like, kind of let go on projects and like say, okay, that's it um so that's what usually in like in production you have a producer telling you that's it that that's the budget end of budget finished you know but like when you're working for yourself you kind of have to do it by yourself and say okay that's it this was a one day work and it has to finish like this so unless you do that you might never end the i have a endless you know uh, folder of project never finished because of that because you go like oh that could be better but then let's see and you know so it's really important to put bar no to pull a limit and to mm-hmm. say now i'm finished because usually when i'm best act the best work i do is usually a flow it's like a as i said before it's like a i sit down and never stand up for a bit and i and I just keep working and I and yeah and, and it's it's not like I feel like I have to keep working I just like I'm in the flow and then just like keep you know I'm super focused and I love what I'm doing and then when I look the the, the watch again it's like uh, it's like oh my god it's been like five hours and I you know I didn't eat and that's when usually the best stuff comes comes out and and then, of course, sometimes there's a you know there's a bit of thinking that you step back and you look at it the day after to see if it's still good. Uh, but I don't know, like for for personal experience, the more I usually think about it, and it it could you know it could be just for the worse. You know, I rather um, most of the time it's just that. Uh, yeah, the the more streamlined I am, and the, the more like 
focus in that time and then I close it, you know, and and that's what I'm trying to discipline myself at, uh, at this moment. Like just trying to like do one, maximum one or two days projects, um, you know, and because that's the problem with 3D usually because it takes longer time than other mediums because it's, it's really technical, you know, and there's, there's, there's many steps to do. And especially if you want to do animations, it's, you know, it's really hard to, to complete one uh, 3D um, piece and to be animated as well in one day is pretty much impossible. I mean, you can, but, you know, it's just one day. If you want to render frames, you know, then render every frame will take a certain amount of time and that you need to count that in. Um, so, you know, it's, it's challenging, but, you know, that's what makes it fun in a way. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I can see that. Would you say that you um, are your harshest critic, Leo? Yeah, yeah, hundred <laughs> percent. No, I, I can, I can really see that you're a, you're a perfectionist and, and a master. So, did you, did you feel that you know, growing up surrounded by all of this incredible art in Florence, that 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 has given you something, um, something really special um, as as part of your art art training that that you couldn't have just had by you know looking in books i mean i was really really young so mm -hmm. you know it's, it's hard to um i you know to remember but i feel like deeply you know like unconsciously yes it definitely changed something and but um, but also, you know, I I always study a lot of uh, fine art anyway. Um, so and I always, you know, loved all the classical sculptures and you know all the Michelangelo and and, and you know all the Bernini, Canova, all the um, the great must Italian great masters and always be so impressed by the you know what they could achieve back in the day and you know and in a way it kind of makes me sad that now that we have all this technology there's no one doing that kind of art anymore and the, the art changed anyway so um you know i I like to to see more of that but i know you know it's kind of you know, like they are changed, and and the, the, there's no much of that, and and I miss it in a way. You know, I miss mm -hmm. that kind of, I miss that kind of uh, figurative uh, expression in yeah. art. Um, so that's what I usually try to do to add a both. You know, to have a a mix of something that's more modern and can have a like, uh, you know, like with some pop culture and like reference from, from the modern world, but still preserving some of the, uh, you know, the rules and the, the lines that, that, that remind us of, you know, art of the past. We are, you know, since you're a kid, you kinda, you know, already investing in what you're gonna be as a person from the first second. So for sure, you know, Growing up the way I did changed. I mean, made that hundred percent what I am now. So, all even all the things that didn't go as I wanted, you know, maybe you know, with my family and the problems, maybe we had, you know, all that kind of morphed me what I am now. So, you know, I I don't think there's no regrets in anything. Uh, it's just a journey, you know, and you just try to enjoy and just go with it yeah that's amazing i think um you know we we talk about a digital renaissance now and you you just spoke about how you feel sad in a way that no one's doing the kind of sculptural figurative um expression um expressionist work that that was in existence then but at the same time you know would you say that this is a digital renaissance 
Yeah, I mean, yeah, 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 hundred percent. It is in uh, you know, and like everything in art is, it could be, you know, there's there's people that are gonna love it and people are gonna hate it, and but I feel like that's what art always been in a way. I mean, now more than ever, especially modern art. Um, as long as people talk about it and people remember what it is and knows what it is, it doesn't matter what, if people like it or not in a way. And, and this, you know, is we are definitely, you know, in a new, something is changing right now. It's already changed, you know, so, um, and that's, that's why I'm, you know, fully invested in this because I don't want to be late in it. You know, I don't want to be like, okay, now did that happened and I wasn't on the train, you know, the train kind of already left in a way the station. So, and hopefully I'm on board, you know, <laughs> I would say you're on board, Leo. <laughs> <laughs> We certainly feel that you are. So um, it's a privilege to, to, you know, to learn about your work in this way and, and to have you as part of the Meta Art Club's group of 35 artists. Um, and I, you know, I wanted to draw some parallels actually between the Renaissance, the original Renaissance, and the kind of relationship that existed then, which was unique um, and perhaps existed for the first time between the art patrons and the artists. So like the Medici and the way that they commissioned artworks um, and the relationship they had with the artists. And just to ask you, Leo, you know, today NFT artists have this really unique contact with your collectors um, that you can speak to them directly. They can contact you. They can, they can give you feedback about your work. How has that looked for you? Um, yeah, you know, it's like, that's, that's one of the good things It's it's how easy it is to, um, to communicate, you know, because it's, is being a digital word, you know, it's really, there's no really <laughs> compared to back in the days where you had to, you know, miles and miles on a horse, maybe, you know, <laughs> to go to to speak with with your artist i mean now it's just you know a click and you and you can speak to someone uh for instance like frank in china you know so and and it's amazing you know it, it's amazing how easily you can connect and how easily you can create a community and and you know it's it's the problem with it is a bit of a double edge sword you know because it's never being so connected being so exposed everywhere is, is always is always the problem that we have in every social media anyway you know it's like having too much you know too too much to see too much to uh, comparison with other people and you know it's like that that's the only problem with it it's as amazing as problematic sometimes you know because you can be it's amazing to be so con easily connected and, and to speak with a collector, but it's also, you know, can be toxic like everything on the internet. So, you know, as long as you kind of focus on your journey and the, the good relationship you have with your collectors, and you should be good, I guess. But, <laughs> but yeah, um, I even think could be even more in some ways could even be more like in back in the days where the you know the uh the mecenate i'm not sure the english word for that but the 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 commissioner for the artwork would mm -hmm. have something to say about it even more i feel like nowadays we are a bit too artists are even are way more full of their the themselves than back in the day. You know, they're like, you know, I want to do this is my thing. You want it, you take it. You know, there's less of a communication back and forth. I feel like with the you know with the collector, 
and I feel like it would be nice because you know sometimes if I have a bit of a direction I'm I I feel more pushed in a way and I feel like I'm more motivated because it's still even you're an artist it's still a job after all you know you have to you know and then and it's nice to you know like collaborate with people and even if it's just one collector but you know he can ask you oh I want to do this for my family because it's important and I want to put something these elements inside you know like that's we, I feel like we lost that because right now it's more of a run for the you know run for gold in a way and, and the artist is going to create something and the collector is going to pick it up in general just because maybe it's that that's a famous artist and thinking less of what they will want you know so that's another thing to keep in mind that i hope will come because you know the communication is so easy right now and why not why why not just ask him hey can you make this piece for me you know rather than i make the piece and then someone buys it from you it could be just a hey i want to i want this piece of art would you make it for me you know that's you know that's something that I don't think is happening much right now in the NFT space. It's happening a lot, of course, in the, in the fine art, in the regular art world. But I feel like in the NFT space, there's a, it's, it's too chaotic at the moment and it's, there's not much of that happening. Um, yeah. I'm sure we come because, you know, that's, if it's a true renaissance, you know, we we'll definitely go in that direction. It's happening... Uh... Actually, I just commissioned a piece of work. Um, there is in Iran, there is an amazing pixel artist. And normally I'm not really into pixel art, but she is really doing amazing pixel art, especially about the Persian heritage. So it's the old Persian sceneries that she's making into pixel art. So actually I asked her to make one for of the Forbidden City in China. And she loves it. And... Uh, but I agree with you. I think the speed of the NFT world, uh, you know, it, it's not happening uh, that much. And I also agree. I think I really hope it will happen. Uh, but I believe, you know, we are creating now and we really hope that the, the top artists will stand up and, you know, get the, the right spotlight on them, that this will happen more and more. So I think you're very correct what you say, Leo. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Actually, and and to touch on on what Frank's just mentioned, um, you know the commission for this project for the Meta Art Club um, has been a new beginning. Is that yeah. how do, how has that played into to your work, and how many works have you created, or are you creating, and and can you give us an indication of of what they're what they're like? Yeah. Um... Yeah, that's that's also why I was, you know, talking about this because I, uh, I was, you know, thinking a lot about this new beginning thing, and I probably, you know, as usually I started overthinking it, and then I just did start sketching something, and came out, you know, something that it might look a bit like it's not that. Uh, not basic what's the word sorry <laughs> um try i speak spanish but you can try me in italian i might i might help <laughs> uh banale but now like, yeah like no no innovative you know like the, the yeah. concept is yeah. you know because it is it's about like growth in a way right. but you know it's uh i i mean i I did to I, I just need to do the last piece and there are three pieces and they're connected to each other and there are different stages of of um, of the, the the psychological development of a human mind and a human being in general so in a way you know it's kind of like of course you know like the beginnings but hopefully I, I you know the 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 way I portrayed them would make them look, would you know, like something new anyway. Like, it's, because it's, you know, the more I was thinking about it, it's like, it has to be, it has to be something about 
about a child in in, in a way you know because like that's that's when you know that's when we are the most excited about stuff anyway you know that's when you are the most open when new beginnings are really new beginnings in a way because like you know now i'm 30 and still you know there's some things that really get me excited like the first time i i don't know i saw a horse when i was a kid for instance i don't know but there's nothing like it you know there's nothing like that uh unfortunately so in my head this, there was nothing more representative of um new beginnings as you know the uh, developing mind and from you know from from like a nothing to a living human being so that's what um that's what is going to be the my three pieces are going to be on and and yeah and they're going to still be in tone with all the other stuff i did and the last two pieces i have on super rare so still preserving a lot of classic art feeling let's say vibe you know so so yeah hopefully hopefully people gonna like it i can't wait to see them and we're all super excited to to see your work leo so yeah i'm i have no doubt that they're going to be amazing um and on that on that note about you know the what you're developing these works around like the psychological development of a human mind i mean do you do you think that the tech the technology like the vr technology the ar technology is is leading your work or is your imagination leading what you can actually physically manifest through the technology and and do you, do you feel that um your tech your work is going to progress in even more you know incredible ways when the tech catches up or is the right now is the tech leading and you know then you manifest what what you can as an artist or do you, do you see that reversal happening at some point um yeah that's a tough question i mean it's a, you know it's a bit of a both ways i mean you know sometimes it's Sometimes I feel restricted uh, by technology. Sometimes I feel like technology is just driving what I'm doing in a way, and the software, you know, as well. Depends what I'm, when I'm work, where I'm working. But you know, as I work a lot in VR, there I, you know, I feel no limits, you know, and and sometimes having some limits can help, you know. Like you know, when. I, when I'm working with clay, normal clay, I would maybe make some shapes differently because because you you know gravity doesn't allow you to do whatever you want. And you know sometimes you want a bit of gravity, sometimes you don't want gravity at all. So I feel like a balance is always the best in anything. Um, and. And yeah, and even in the piece I, I'm doing now, it's like, there's, there's a bit of both. There's a bit of elements that are part of, they feel like part of the real world and they're more like sculptures. And then there's other elements that are more like, they, they, they couldn't exist, of course. And, and they couldn't, like if I had to make them with proper clay, they wouldn't stand because there's no, they're like floating in space and you know so i feel like that's that's also why it, it makes the piece interesting because it's a it's a there's this contrast between the the physical world and the and the you know the mind in a way but i don't want to spoil too much about the, i look um, forward for that leo <laughs> would look would look really much forward to see the pieces um we we uh, you know leo it is so interesting to hear you talking about your art and um i really believe that this is just your beginning uh because the, the sheer quality and the thought and the study that you do behind one of your artwork is is unbelievable so and i i just feel personally that we are just entering the time 
where the true artist, um, you know, just going to get the recognition and the celebration. So, and we hope again with the Meta Art Club that we uh, can help a little bit from our side, uh, you know, to give that spotlight. Uh, Leo, it's it's just great to have you in the in the group of thirty five. Um, I'm 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 really happy to for you to represent uh, Italy and especially Florence. And I know from your artwork, even the board ape as the Michelangelo, I can see, I can see you going more and more in that direction. And also your three D creation next to it, and the, the the statues that you make are just unbelievable. So we all look forward to to have you in the drop and working very closely, uh, you know, to make this all a big success. So I like to thank you again. Thank you, Frank. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I share Frank's sentiments um, wholeheartedly. And Leo, it's been a real pleasure speaking with you today. And thank you so much for sharing Hi. your practice. I mean, you're a true artist um, in every sense of the word. And it's, it's, you know, it's illuminating for me to be able to understand how you work. So, and I'm sure for everyone who's going to be seeing this video. So thank you. I hope to have the opportunity to catch up with you again on podcast. Um, and in other formats and thank you yeah thank you so much thank you for, so much for having me it was a pleasure thank you, thank you frank ciao ciao leo till soon